So we're joined here by Phil Taylor, 16 times world champion, obviously the greatest player there's ever been. Retired after the world championship. Phil, how on earth do you, do you miss it? How are you getting on without darts? I'm still working. I've not really retired as such. I mean, people say, what's your retirement like? I've been very busy. I've been travelling traveling here, there and everywhere. I've been around the world, doing exhibition work and personal appearances. A lot of media, a lot of radio stuff. Um, charity work, we've been doing charity work. We've been doing exhibition work. So really, we haven't, bar from... Uh, the second week of July to the end of August, I've not had a break. Right. So you're playing just about every night then? No, no, not every night. But I'd say roughly two or three a week, I'd say. About two or three a week. So I imagine your average is still pretty good then, Phil. I, I don't know. I've got some, I've, I've, exhibition work, I've, I've been hit and miss, to be honest with you. Some nights I've been brilliant and then some nights I've been mediocre. But my bad games aren't bad games anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, um, I mean, is there anything that would make you come back? People are talking about, Peter Wright was saying this week how he misses you, who wish you'd come back. Is there any, I don't know, is there anything that would make you come back? The, the schedule, I couldn't do it now because of the schedule. You know, to, to, to get to a certain tournament, you've got to play every week now. And, and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't travel the world like I used to do. You know, if, if Barry wanted me to do something, we'd have to sit down and really have a good chat about it. Um, and it, it'd have to be a wild card, but wild cards, I've never really agreed with wild cards, to be quite honest with you. I've always thought it's wrong on the, on the people that have qualified legitimately, yeah. you know. I mean, would you come out for a one-off match if somebody sort of said, I don't know, would you play Van Gerwen or something in a, in a huge match in a, I don't know, in a pay-per-view event or something like that? Would that appeal to you? Yeah, I think so. I, I, would, I wouldn't see why not. Uh, but I'd have to get time now to get ready. Obviously, I don't, I don't practice like I used to do. I'm not dedicated like I used to be. Yeah. Um, I thought somebody, somebody mentioned a good idea where he said Barry's made the World Championship, I think, something like over 100 players now, you know, bringing some of the old players back, some of the old World Champions. And I thought, that's not a bad idea as it happens. Yeah. Maybe something Barry might think about in the future, I don't know. Wow, so what were you thinking maybe yourself, what, John Lowe? John Lowe's still around, isn't he? Cliff Lazarenko's still around. You've got Big Cliff. Who, well, Cliff wasn't, he was a, a British Open champion, I think. Yeah, I don't think he won the world. Um, Bobby George has been a world champion. This news of the world champion. Um, Bob Anderson, Keith Dallin. What's Keith Dallin world champion? He's already, he's already told me 5,000 times. Rod Arrington, another fella. I mean, I mean, so so if, uh, if Barry came up with that idea, would you, would you consider it then? Of course I would consider it, yeah. It'd be, it'd be good fun. Brilliant. OK, good stuff. So, um, I mean, you've seen, you've seen Adrian here this week then, Phil. I mean, um, it's good to see him back and playing something like the way he can, isn't it? I don't think Aiden played like he can. The, the Aiden I know, and the one I practiced with for about two and a half years, no, that's not Aiden. He, he slowed his throw down. Whatever he's doing, he's trying to get better, that 100%. And it will come together. I know what Aiden's like, so it will come together. It's just, it, I think, maybe the wrong time to do it. You know, the World Match Play and the World Championship. You know, I'd have gone back to my old style, just, just let me darts flow. Because when Aiden's happy and he's buzzing, he's he's very, very difficult player to beat. Um, slow down, try to slow his first start down so you know he follows it in. But it was difficult for him, and I, don't, I think it was the wrong time for Dewey, really. But it could have gone the other way where he could have won the tournament. You just don't know, you know, with, with darts, it's, it's all trial and error. I've done it myself and lost 7 0. I mean, you, you say sort of you know what Adrian's like. I presume you mean like he's very determined. He's very determined, yeah, 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 and he's put every effort into it as well. I know he's practiced hard because I can tell by the way he's lost weight as well. Um, but he's a happy player, eight years, and he's one what gets the crowd on his side. I was commentating on his first game and with, with James Wilson, and he just hadn't got that smile on his face, and he hadn't got the crowd, you know, come on, AD behind him, you know, the big buzz where he's hitting the 180s and whatnot, you know, he, he just didn't see, he seemed a bit flat. Like he's trying too hard, like the world's on his shoulders. Like, and I've been there. I know what I know what, exactly what he's feeling. He's trying to lift the roof off the building because he's that frustrated, you know. Because upstairs he's probably hitting more in 80s than, than anybody, and then he come downstairs with the main game, and it's a diff, complete different game. Oh, that's, that's fascinating. You, you think you think he needs to relax then? Yes, a bit like Rory McIlroy's just done. Go in there and just relax and enjoy it. Think we know what? If I lose, I lose. If I don't, I don't. But I'm just going to play my own game and play natural, and that's that way. Ad plays at his best, like that. Because you were always, I mean, interviewed you plenty of times tonight. You're always good at taking the pressure off yourself. It seems to me like you often used to say, "Well, I've got nothing to prove anymore." Is that the kind of attitude Ad has to have? That's the way I made it look like I was taking the pressure off myself. But you're not. No, you've just got to play your normal game. And Aiden is a is a quicker thrower, and he's a natural player. 
and then I've, I just looked at him up there and I thought you're trying too hard here you know what I mean he's, he's, he's the world's on his shoulders and he's trying really hard to, to get his form back and, and play better which is which is fair play to the lad you know what I mean I know he's put a lot of work in and, he, and he's working hard at it but that kind of style won't come, come, come overnight you know he's got to take his time so he, he'll probably need two or three months I think I think if he carries on he'll be ready for the World Championships. That's when he'll be at his best, I think, because his back's against the wall now. And that's the, the times I've seen Adrian is when he's at his best, is when his back's against the wall. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Michael made an early exit um, today as well, uh, this tournament as well, didn't he? I mean, is this just a blip or is it getting tough for him, do you think, Phil? I think it's getting tougher for him. He's getting a little bit older. He's got a young family now. You know, he's got responsibilities and he's away from home a lot. And he's feeling it. I mean, as you're getting older, trust me, when, you, when, you, when he's just gone to Las Vegas and Vegas to China, which is one end of the world to the other, then back to England, it's going to take its toll. And you're playing a player that's fresh, been, been, in, been in his house every day, practising, probably been bed early, nice and fresh, coming to the tournament, knowing that he can beat you because he's beat you before, and you're going to be under pressure. But he, he's, he'll be dangerous now, the next few tournaments, Michael. Well, he's not, he's not silly, he knows how to do it. And then when he's hurt, he's another one who's like a wounded tiger. As soon as he gets hurt, he comes back, comes back for the ferocious, you know. Because that was you, wasn't it? I mean, like whenever, yeah, whenever, it well, whenever Phil Taylor lost, sort of like nobody, nobody wanted to play him in the next tournament because you knew you were going like, to up your average. Because I got lazy, I did get lazy, you know. But, but the schedule when I was doing it wasn't half as what it is now. Trust me. You, I mean, you can't get lazy now because you, you, you're going for. I mean, the lads, whoever playing tomorrow night, go straight to New Zealand on the Monday morning. That's how. That's how busy the schedule is. Well, I mean, this is partly what you did, isn't it? You and Barry Hearn. I mean, you've, you've taken this game to new levels, haven't you, Phil? Don't blame me. Blame that Barry Hearn. <laughs> yeah, we, we did. I mean, we, we tried hard. But Barry was the one with, with Sky that, you know, put all the sponsorship in there and put everything into place and, and put, you know, put the opportunity to every player to, to better themselves. So, so, I mean, you, so you think Michael can still go on and, like, I don't know, maybe for another, another five, ten years or something? I think next year you're going to see a few young players coming through where they haven't been over the years. The ones that have impressed me this week is Joe Cullen. I mean, I've been working with Joe a few times this last year. Michael Smith, I think, is on the verge of breaking through. Um, obviously, Jeffrey. He's, he's a cracking little player and he seems to have a lot of bottle as well. He's, you know, he's throwing nice and natural. Whether after this tournament he starts thinking about it a little bit and starts, you know, just... just Stiffening up a little bit. You don't know, see. You don't know how it's going to affect him. But he seems a nice, level-headed lad. I like him. I see what you mean because he sort of say whether he starts thinking because he's coming with no pressure, has he? No, not at all. Not at all. He's not worried about anybody. But as soon as as soon as you will match play and you start getting the attention and the, you know the autographs and the photographs everywhere you go, and, and then it, then he'll be wanted more for exhibition work and more travelling and probably get put into the Premier League, say. That's when it takes its toll. That's when. That's when the. You know. That's when they become a man. Then. Because you led dealt with that pressure for thirty odd years, didn't you? Mm. I, I mean, you must have been quite relieved to walk away in the end, I guess. Yeah, it was the right time for me. To be honest with you. You know, the schedule was was massive. I couldn't. You know, I'm 58 in a, in a few weeks' time. Couldn't. Couldn't keep it up. It was impossible. I couldn't recuperate. See, last year when I came back from Australia and I, I, I landed, I got three days to get ready for the match play, and I couldn't even. I couldn't even empty the bin. I was shattered. Absolutely shouting as it happened. I got I got past the first round. Matt had put me on. Uh, I think the last day I got past the first round. Then I had two or three days off, and that was when I, I caught up on my rest a little bit. And then I won that one, and I, I had another couple of days off. So it worked. It worked lovely for me. Well, you, I mean, so you think if, if Barry offered you a wild card to the World Championships, then you we could see you back uh, at Ali Pali? We'd have to talk about it, surely. Yeah, but whether I would or not, I don't know. I don't know. Might be commentating. <laughs> well, yeah.